What's up guys? So this is the project that I've been working on for a week or so now. Um, I started on this after somebody stated on one of my previous videos. Um, I believe it was a bipedal evolution video, or I think that's what it's called. And they stated they wanted to see something like that, but with the ability to create custom joints and seeing that custom jointed um, line segment creature try to walk. And I really didn't have much to do this weekend, so that's kind of just what I worked on. So I'm just going to make some random creature. I mean, I've kind of thought about what I want this creature to look like. Uh, but it's still kind of random. Then I'm going to give it two legs. So, I have no idea what this creature is, but it's certainly something. Once the user is done drawing it, they can just press the C button and it creates the um, the population. So the bands up here are the species. Whoa. Okay. Well, the fitness, by the way, depends on how far they move right. This guy, clearly a winner. This guy's population is just going to skyrocket in the next generation, I bet. I'm going to increase the time scale. Yep, I was right practically took over 50% of the population which isn't going to be very good for this guy now because this is using explicit fitness sharing um, where the population actually might fluctuate drastically so in explicit fitness sharing um, the whole species as a group is evaluated uh, in their fitness rather than individuals so if a huge species has something like suppose half the members of a population are in just one species and 50% of those um, and 50% of that population is complete shit that means that you know they have horrible mutations they can't do anything then that population in the next generation is going to be penalized by a lot where to the point where maybe two or three creatures from that population would survive you can actually see this in the graph up there the light pink species fluctuate quite drastically so each species is trying to reach um, some number of creatures in the total population so that their um, species is stable in the sense that they don't go completely extinct. Oh my god, the pink are about to go extinct, guys. Should I? Do I dare? Okay, I, we cannot let the pink guys go extinct. I'm just gonna copy these joints. So far, in fact, that their fitness just skyrockets. We did it. Selective breeding. and they just went extinct so what just happened basically because I artificially chose them to have a very high fitness they have practically you can see that they you can see that their species has been fluctuating for the last whatever 20 or so generations right but because I artificially forced them to have a very high fitness a large majority of the population ended up having a very low fitness and so because this is explicit fitness sharing a low fitness for the overall population is just very very bad this guy is able to reach 9,000 fitness over 9,000 holy shit Vegeta would be proud so I artificially tried to increase the population again but I think I've done more detriment than anything. The fitness seems to have plummeted by a full 5,000. My bad. So now let's slow down the time scale. I'm actually interested. How are these guys learning to run? Elegant. So, oh, this guy. Usain Bolt over here. So they're primarily using the back leg to get the little bit of a jump. And basic oh they're doing like a two bounce technique. I just made that up, I have no idea what that means. And launch. That's pretty cool. There are some issues with the algorithm that converts from the drawn joint image to the actual creatures. If I actually just drew this thing, 
so something that has three joints um, if you think about it the minimum number of joints that you actually need to have these three lines here connected is two joints um, either one of these could have two joints connecting to the other two and all three of them would be connected together but now if I press the C button to create the creatures you can see that one of the lines has two hinge joints the next one has one hinge joint and the last one has zero so there are a total of three hinge joints um, where there should technically just be two and it actually gets much worse the more joints um, that are added into a single location is a massive issue in terms of performance so that's something that I'll probably fix when I feel like it so that's currently the limiting factor in terms of the population size now I'm just going to quickly explain how the neural network part of this works so if I just press the D button so oh my god that's so laggy okay so this is a neural network um, this is an L-man recurrent neural network that I wrote um, it's currently implemented in ELSA's 2.5 so I've just moved some of the creatures out of the way so I can show this properly. They weren't going to get good fitness anyway, so screw them. So there are uh, three uh, inputs to the neural network per joint. Um, the first is its current angle. The second is um, a flag which just gets turned negative one or one, uh, depending on if the angle has reached max turn. And the last one is the previous um, speed of the joint. Um, there are also touch sensor inputs um, so if each of these edges that you see here if any of these edges touch the ground um, that basically that gets set to a one or if it's zero it means it's not touching the ground and a few more I think probably like eight other neurons are just um, looping back from the output um, and outputs are pretty straightforward they're just controlling the joint speed um, and also the loop back um, back into the um, neural network for some state information which isn't really needed in this case since it's an L-man recurrent. This creature did not look like this weird morphed state. It's supposed to look like this red lines over here. It just got crumpled for whatever reason. If you guys ever wondered what it would look like if an octagon tried to move, well this was supposed to be a circle that kind of rolled around does not seem to be rolling much it's kind of weird every time they jump they try to they go into this almost rectangular form that's pretty cool oh this guy he just broke a record oh a bunch of them broke a record that's pretty cool by the way these lines here are the records this is the first place um, and then this is the uh, fifth place. Usually the first place never really fluctuates. It's usually just the um, second to fifth places that usually fluctuate. Now I'm wondering if they could learn to clear some basic obstacles. It's not even that difficult. They just have to kind of learn to hop over them. They have touch sensors on um, every single edge so they should be able to learn when they're touching um, this thing versus when they're touching the ground based on their current angle and based on which um, touch sensors are activating yeah. usually if they're not going far enough I, sh I usually just increase the test time currently it's 50 seconds but I can increase it to 100 seconds or even longer if I wanted to but 100 seconds is the max currently. So this gives them a little bit more of an opportunity to go just a little bit further. Um, and when they go a little bit further, you know, they get evaluated, their fitness goes up. So that uh, creatures that are going much further end up getting a much higher say in the population. Eh, this is not really an obstacle for them at the moment, it seems like. It only took them about 16 generations to be able to do it. I was honestly expecting much longer time. I was expecting like 30 generations or something like that, but this was quite quick. By the way, I made a little bit of a change in the explicit fitness sharing algorithm that I wasn't using before, and that is a what's well, called a beta variable. And a beta variable uh, in this case is actually 
um, the elite creatures that are doing amazing. Um, basically, their fitness is um, raised to, raised by a power of something. So, um, so this way, a population won't just go, go extinct if 50% of a certain species end up doing super bad. Um, the elite creatures who are doing amazing, they, they will their beta variables will give a little bit of a boost to the entire species to keep keep it alive. This way, if a species takes over the entire population, but suppose 90% of that species end up just doing terrible, um, at least the elite creatures would survive. This is not even an obstacle to them anymore. Majority of them are stuck here, but those guys just got bad mutations. It's over 9,000 fitness with the obstacles, that's pretty cool. I've just created another little obstacle here. Um, it's basically just an incline that increases um, from zero degrees all the way up to 30 degrees. So I'm kind of interested if a creature could actually climb this and jump over. I'm gonna give this thing at least two legs so it could have some grip. I mean, I, this if you think about it, it's just one giant line um, and that might make it a bit flimsy so if I could give it more legs what do you guys think do you think this thing will be able to climb it oh things are looking kinda promising by the way the gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared I have not changed it at all um, I have honestly no idea why they kind of go flying I think they get to about the halfway mark and then flip over but this guy just broke a record I'm pretty sure they're doing pretty good nine generations they have gone about half of the hill but they can get to about the 30 degree incline but then they can't seem to be able to continue going forward after that 30 degree incline Twenty six generations and finally they can get to about halfway up the thirty degree incline. About up to here. It's not long before they finally before they're finally able to clear this hill. Oh my god, that guy. Poor guy. Jumped backwards. My camera tracking sucks. It's it's actually bound to the bottom. So basically I had to increase the training time a little bit higher so they could finally be able to make it up. But it seems that they can do it now. Sweet. I would say it took less than 37 generations. I mean I could have increased the training time and I think that some of them would have been able to make it maybe at the 35th generation or so. The whole population seems to be mimicking the same jumping behavior with little bits of differences they have all sort of followed off of some previous ancestor that is most likely dead now oh and he's going oh my god that guy just broke a crazy record 10,000 fitness I have never seen this before so this was a fun little side project that I worked on. I'll most likely give a link to this in the uh, description once I've optimized it. That's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.